Good morning to you all. Wow, what a week it's been, right? What a week indeed, of course. Um, I'm so proud of you all um, for um, being so earnest with your online learning. Um, and we've got a few lovely things to share with you this morning as we have our end of week assembly. But First of all, and I wonder if some of you have actually got this on your TVs in your front room. Um, first of all, let's stand up and sing Across to Buy, the national anthem of the UAE. Thank you. 
everyone. Hope you did get up and sing. Yeah, looks a bit dodgy on this angle. Anyway, guys, 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 I've got so many things I want to tell you. Um, but yes, I hope you have been helping fold towels while they've been drying. I'm after all of those soggy window leaks. And I hope that you have been helping around the house. Um to make sure that you've done lots and lots of jobs because you are a stoic little bunch. Right. So, as you know, I'm a little bit like a grandmother who loves you all, cares about you all, worries about you all. And that's not just the staff. It's each and every single one of you. Um, and this week, um, I wanted to share with you on the assembly something that I've been working on. You know I love a creative project, right? Well, so our school is something that means a great deal to me. And over the last 11 years, we have created a story that quite simply is unique. It's a story um, which so many different people have been a part of and something that every year I want all of you, all the children that go to Victory Heights Primary School and all of the parents that are part of the community to feel proud of, right? Um, and when I was thinking actually that a lot of FS1, you guys would have been born during COVID. I mean, that's bomb because there's so many things that have happened to us in such a short period of time. And all the time, every year, we're growing to be better and better, but also to keep true to ourselves, which is why I'm wearing this T-shirt that somebody in year six gave me when they left a couple of years ago. We know that our mantra is to nurture, challenge, excel. We know that we value kindness. We know that we value our Ellie animals. So um, I'm sure some of you watch Netflix, right? Um, and I actually secretly, I love a documentary. I really love documentaries because I love finding out about information. And I watched this really, really interesting series um, quite a while ago now, and it was called How to Live to 100. And I was thinking, what's this about? Anyway, bear with me, everyone. This series was all about the blue zones, right? Um, <clears throat> and a blue zone, let me tell you, was first used by the author Dan Butner, who was studying areas of the world in which people live exceptionally long lives. And I was thinking, this is really interesting. I wonder, is it about happiness as well? Because you can't, you need some happiness as well to live a long life, you know? Anyway, guys, listen to this. These areas that he worked out about when he was studying about different communities, and a community is a group of people, right? A bit like Victory Heights Primary School. When he was looking at these blue zones, this guy and his colleagues who were like scientists and researchers, they drew blue circles around the world map and they drew circles about these areas. There was five of them and people in these areas that were super happy and just lived long, happy, wonderful lives all had something in common. Well, you can imagine Miss Sasha was properly hooked. They ate more plant based foods. So lots of healthy, beautiful, coloured, nutritious foods, which is something that I am a real advocate about, not takeaways, lots of fresh, um, wonderful food. They um, So they ate lots of healthy food. They spent less time on devices, right? We know devices are great, but you know they spent time playing traditional games, talking to each other, talking to their families and their friends. So that was the second thing. Um, they moved on a daily basis, right? So I know that some of you have got dogs or younger babies and stuff, and they need a lot of walking. And I'm sure, and hopefully this week outside in your community, you've been able to get out and about when the weather dried off, right? So walking around, not just always taking the car, but getting out and about on the bike. Um, and also doing things like gardening, doing things where you have to sort of get practical and be energised. Again, you know, making sure that you're really involved in physical activity. So that was number three. And the fourth thing was that they valued family and community. And you know that it is really, really important. Something that we do as a school um, is about talking, about conversations, about um, working through problems about not just sending messages or avoiding 
um, problems or issues or difficulties, right? We talk them through because it's perfectly imperfect. So why am I telling you all about this? Well, uh, I do actually like to do a little bit of creative writing. So I wrote a story about our school and thinking, hmm, I wonder if it could be included in a blue zone, Mr. Mr. B. Anyway, so I wrote a story about our school and then I spoke to various teachers around school. I spoke to Mr. Chris, I spoke to Ms. Vasuda, I spoke to Mr. Rothwell, and then I um, looked at some of the children that I thought would be really great in taking part in a video of us showing that we were a blue zone, that we did these four things. So we went to a studio. I hope you guys are all watching that we're in the video, right? Because you're gonna see it now. I'm so excited. Okay. Okay. And this is the very first time that we've shown our Victory Heights video for 2023, 2024, because we make a video every year to share with our community. So this video is about blue zones. I've mixed in there things that are important to us as a school um, about being realistic with our well-being, of helping each other out, about our Ellie animals, about exploring technology, about just listening to each other um, and just being resilient and also what you guys will be like when you leave Victory Heights. Some of you in FS might think that's way, that's miles away. Yes, it is, but that's what our extended family is all about. So I'll stop going on now, now that you know what a blue zone is. And I'd be interested in some of the older ones if you could explore blue zones more. But here we go. For the very first time, Mr. Rothwell, don't have any technical glitches now because this is a big build up. We were going to show it in a cinema, but I thought big TVs um, are the way to show it. And we need it after this week to remind ourselves what's important about the VHPS community. So here goes. Here is our Blue Zone video. We all know that some decisions we make are made with gut instinct. It's a feeling, quite often not entirely based on facts, but a strong urge that pulls you, draws you to choose. That's the one. It's the same feeling you get when you know a school is the right fit for your child and your family. At Victory Heights Primary School, we have spent just over a decade refining our unique recipe to success a homemade delight that is quite frankly authentic, delicious, credible, joyous and relatable. A school where traditional community relationships are genuinely nurtured. We value being in the moment. In this perfectly imperfect world, our school does not airbrush the bumps and bruises. For those days when you feel all out of sorts and in a bit of a pickle, fear not you won't be alone. We call these moments puddles with our Ellie animals that embody life skills, we build resilience, teamwork, creativity, adaptability, growth and curiosity, strategy and connections. At our school, we also know that sometimes we need to just stop and listen. Imagine choosing a freshly made cake in a homemade bakery or a puppy from an adorable litter of roly-poly balls of fluff. Where there is a lot of choice, how do you possibly decide? You get a feeling, don't you? A feeling that connects your heart to your head. We believe that conversations are the key to our child's formative years. Developing ideas, understanding feelings and relishing in laughter matter so very much. We challenge thinking and knowledge and are always looking for opportunities to celebrate and unconditionally applaud every unique character. Yes, we embrace the snowball effect of artificial intelligence, just as this gathers momentum, we will keep a healthy check on fresh air, fresh food, fresh mindsets and fulfilment. Our children are guided on how to manage emotions. 
It's realistic to say for everyone's well-being that resilience means acceptance and courage. We are determined to keep our community solution-oriented for a peaceful future where growth and happiness are spread from this generation to the next. We value traditions that are woven into memories and set expectations. Victory Heights Primary School, a unique recipe of tradition and growth. Wow. Well, Miss Sasha, what what can I say? A directorial tour de force. Where are you? What what are you sitting on? Where are you I'm in a I'm so old now that I now live in a nursing home. I can tell. It really does look I hope you're all right. I know it's aging these 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 challenging moments. I do hope you're all right. Anyway, let's remember that we've got FS here. It's not just the Sasha and Mr. Roswell show. Well, I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked it. We've not shared it with the whole community, but a big thank you, a big thank you to all those children that um, joined with me in the studio and um, went along with my creative Steven Spielberg um, directing skills because i had it all in my head and a big a big big thank you to Fasuda. um and i hope you've got, you guys you've got lots in your head miss asher and sometimes okay, i just, just it's remember just bursting the at the seams yeah just remember the audience here okay it's not about this is not about you and me yeah so thanks guys to everybody that appeared i particularly loved i loved uh annabelle in that apple um uh, arabella eating that apple at the beginning sitting on the cushion sorry arabella um you were just so brilliant all of us. you just set the apple all the way through but no all of the children thank you so much and um we'll be sharing it out again so that you can watch it um and i know that some of you that are in it will want to kind of you know zoom in on yourselves but what do you want to talk about old mr r in your chair there what do you want to natter about well, I want to live to 100 for a start off. So I've been making my own bread, which I'm sure I get a pat on the back for. Uh, well, you I might wanted... need to sell it soon because the, the, the shops have got an issue. You might have to have Mr. Rothwell's ba Ben's Bakery. It'll be a side hustle. Uh, no, I just wanted to say, Miss Asha, first of all, obviously, I wanted to say just how proud I am of everyone's adaptability and flexibility with the rain. I know it was difficult and on Tuesday. Uh, well, on Monday, when we sent all of the teachers home with their laptops, because we had an inkling that the rain could be bad, we didn't realise quite how bad it would be. And I, I just wanted to send my um, heart felt uh, thanks to all of the teachers who've done an amazing job with distance learning, all of the children who've been incredible in participating. And for both of those people, just under really difficult circumstances, yeah. I know that one of our teachers had to move out of their house and still carried on distance learning despite moving house halfway through a massive storm and flood situation. I know there are children out there that have got houses that are really badly damaged by floods. Uh, and I'm, yeah, our feelings go out to you and whatever we can do as a community to support you, I'm sure we will do. Uh, but I just wanted to yeah. applaud everyone. No, absolutely, absolutely. And I know that we sent out a message about Mr. Carpea and Mr. Parminda um, and Mr. Santalal and Mr. Cuthbert um, and Mr. Raoul and all of our guys, Mr. Ram, all of our guys that have been working tirelessly along with the facilities to get our school spick and span. And, and yeah, you're absolutely right. The whole community has been connected through distance learning and sending messages. Um, and I know we've been checking in on everyone. So, yeah, w well done. Well done, everybody. Uh, these are these are always challenging times, but um, we've we've been exceptionally, exceptionally proud. We had about 780 kids online this morning, which is quite incredible, all the way from FS1 up to U6. So, yeah, I agree. Well done and well done to, uh, to all the teachers. So um, what we got coming up next, Mr. Rothwell? Well, I thought we'd actually uh, play a song because the, the message of the day is about being proud. Uh, and I thought we'd have a little bit of a musical break and have a, a little bit of a song. People at home, uh, I'm sure mums and dads should have heard this one, if not children. Have a sing along. The lyrics will be on the screen and we will Come see on, you in honey. a couple of minutes. Honey, join in. We like this song. Let's go. I 
looking through the window of my mind Reflections of the fears I know I've left behind I step out of the ordinary I can feel my soul ascending I'm on my Stop me now Then you can do the same Yeah What have you done today To make you feel proud It's never too late to try What have you done today To make you feel proud You could be so mad They say that all dogs look like their owners, right? Honey, yeah, when I took her for a walk the other day, I did my hair like that as well, you know. What do you think? So, honey, let's find out. What's coming up in term three? When it gets started? Well, I know. So we were going to have 12 weeks. We've now only got 11 weeks left. Uh, but we've got lots to cram into those 11 weeks, Miss Sasha. So next week, we've got our swimming galas. So every child in the school is going to be involved in our swimming galas. So I'm looking forward yeah. to going down and watching those. I know we've got some incredible swimmers in the school. Uh, we've done so, so well at the BSME Games over the last few years, uh, winning yeah. the swimming galas. So that's going to be an amazing event. Uh, so thanks to the P department for putting those on. Mr. Mo, our uh, swimming coach expert. Um, yeah, oh, got, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Your Ramadan art 
art thing, your head teacher's award, you know, that board where we put all those photos up. What's happening with that? Yeah, because obviously we were having this week for children to complete those and hand them in and, and so I can collect them and give out the award. I'm just going to extend that until Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, for your entries and then we'll give out the award on Friday and launch the next award as well. So if you haven't given it to me, I've had a couple of people send it through on Seesaw because I think they were worried that they weren't going to get an entry. You've still got time. Come to me, give it on my desk by Wednesday uh, and you will be in the running to win the Ramadan award. Award. So now that's we've had that. good. I'm glad of that because I know some people have worked really hard on those. Look forward to seeing oh, them. Now. Now we... Really great. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing those. Maybe we can get those into a display. Now, Monday, I know Miss Chloe was talking to us all um at staff briefing this morning. What's lovely Miss Chloe got planned for us? What's happening on Monday, Mr. Rothwell? Well, so on Monday, it is World Earth Day, okay? So every 22nd of April, we have Earth Day, and that commemorates all sorts of things about how we can uh, ensure that our planet is, stay is sustainable for the future, things about reducing plastic usage, our energy uses to try and stop the climate uh, crisis, the raising in the temperature. So we'll be learning about that. We'll be making pledges on Monday about how we can take Ooh. part in ensuring the longevity of our planet, not just about us talking about blue zones and ourselves being uh, able to stay alive for a long time, but we need to make sure our planet is here for us as well. Yeah. So we need to take got, action to do we've that. Got to look up, we've got to look after our planet. Absolutely, absolutely. Sorting it out. Yeah. FS1, we've got to make some promises, right? We've got to, we've got to make some promises. Also, slight last minute change to the discos, right? Yep, so we were going to have our discos. We were going to have Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2 and FS Disco for the first time this week, which has been put on by the Year 6s as they look to raise some money to put on an incredible end-of-year show. Now, we have delayed them by one week because we want everyone to be able to really enjoy those discos. And we know coming out of this week where we've got some members of our community who've got really upended lives and, and having to move into different houses or haven't had electricity or things we were we weren't quite sure that everyone would be able to truly enjoy those discos um the summer of love disco so we have put them back for one week uh so you've still got opportunities if you haven't bought your tickets to purchase tickets if you want to come and we're sure it'll be a great event where we sort of uh put the rain behind us, put the flood in behind us. We've had a week to try and get our lives back in order. Uh, we've been in school and we can have a wonderful disco. Yeah, absolutely. Summer of love disco. I like that. I will be there showing my moves, showing my moves. I know that the new Taylor Swift album is out today because I'm done oh, with the right? I'm down sure the some of our teachers will be playing that on repeat. Uh, yeah, so the rest of this term... We've got lots on, Miss Sasha. We've got lots of trips. I know uh, Year 5 are going to the Crocodile Park, we hope, but we're not sure if it will be this week because we do need to make sure that that facility is up and running because obviously lots of water and lots of crocodiles, lots of children might not be the best mix. Uh, yeah, well, maybe we'll take Connie up there at the weekend just to test. No, no, we count the crocodiles. Make sure all the crocodiles are where they need to be. But yeah, there's, there's, FS1 there's... are going to Woohoo. We've got FS2 woo -hoo. going to Woohoo. Woo woohoo. What's Woohoo? It's like an indoor place where there's lots of like uh, activities woo that children can do. Woohoo Easter. <laughs> woohoo Easter. Sounds like the sort of place you should go. In it, I agree. Well, Madam Two Swords next week for Year Two. FS2 what? are going to bounce. Madame to Swords. Oh. But year two, we've got FS2 are going to go to bounce. There might be some trips that Mr. Rob is organising at the end of the year. So we've got lots to look forward to, as well as our swim galas next week. It's going to be a busy, busy, busy now, 11 week. That's the reminded me, because I know Miss Sarah shared with us the results of the house points. I know that all of you that are um, uh, part of the house system, obviously, um, yes, those leopards won. But don't think that just because you didn't, that um, that we can't make sure that those point scores turn around. I'd love to be able to know who in your class is a real stoic house point winner. I would really like to recognise those people, Mr. Rothwell. We'll see if we can work it out with Miss Sarah of which members of Oryx or Falcons or um, Leopards. What's the other one? Can't remember. 
I've, lo I've lost Fox it. What's the Foxes, Foxes. Foxes. Uh, which one of those members in the, the class are, are real kind of those quiet house point um, dedicated um, souls? So, yeah, let's, uh, because we'll have the cup, obviously, and the house point competition at the end. Yeah, and there's now, a also... new competition, actually. Miss Sarah's talking to me, a digital artwork competition, which she's running in conjunction with Mr. Chris as well. Oh, guess who's teaching art next week? I don't know. Tell me, who is teaching art next week? Oh, Somebody. wow. Yeah. I should tell Mr. Car Payer to get extra cleaners in. Yeah. Good luck if you've got art next week. Miss Ash is in the room. We'll be over to FS to see you and we will finish those art activities um, because, you know, we love the creative arts as well as our bread and butter skills. Now, I know that the teachers are going to be sharing with everybody, even in FS2, writing expectations for the end of the year. Do you know what was really interesting? We did a survey. Boys and girls love writing. They like typing. They like writing about all sorts of things. And um, I want you to know, guys, that you might not find sometimes it easy to write, say, four paragraphs, two paragraphs, one paragraph, depending on what year you are. But your language and your ideas can always be recorded in lots of different ways. So we're going to be working on our bread and butter skills as well before the end of the year, right? Um, and making sure you change your books in the library so we can keep our reading skills. So all the normal stuff, guys, um, to make sure that we are being the best that we can be, like our school song says. What else? Anything else? Indeed. You? Well, that that's pretty much it. We've got lots to look forward to. We have got some, some of you, year two to year six, will be doing your NGRT assessments, which you have done twice already this year. Some of you in year three to six will be doing your GL maths uh, English and science assessments. You'll also be having some Arabic assessments and some Islamic assessments. So there's lots of assessments to look forward to. Now, I know sometimes we find that those are super stressful. I don't want people to get stressed out by them, but we can make sure that we make sure we're completely prepared for those assessments. That when we have some revision that our teacher asks us to do, that we look over our, our previous work, we make sure that we put the hard work in. So that on those days where we have those assessments, we're completely prepared. And I'm sure, Miss Sasha, I know you are, you've got Alfie there who is looking forward to his A levels. And I'm sure you're telling him exactly the same thing. Oh, Make sure I you're am. Prepared. Don't you worry. He's upstairs now. I was going to obviously try to drag him on the video to say hello to all the children. You know, Alfie used to come to Victory Heights. Uh, he's now nearly 18. But yes, there is a time, guys, when we just need to knuckle down and especially. Uh, this time of year, let's work together, encourage each other to to, to uh, make sure that we've got all of our skills that we've been working on uh, into our work. Right. What's happening right. now? Well, we've got a little bit of light relief. Miss Haley, who is in charge of well-being, has been oh. talking to some of the adults around the school uh, to give us all a bit of light relief. And then I'll come back and then we'll have Miss Danielle and she's going to introduce some of our incredible uh, poetry uh, winners from the year. Uh, so uh, I'm going to say farewell to you, Miss Sasha. You can go home, You can go and make sure that Alfie's doing his revision. Uh, oh, but I miss everyone. Look, you see, I get really restless in the house. I, I can't behave very well when I don't see everyone. So I'm trying to be good. I know it's been difficult. But yeah, all right, Mr. Rock. I know you've missed me most. I have, and I will see you on Tuesday. What? Because what? I, I, I'm at FS on Monday, so I don't see you on Mondays. You do that deliberately. All right, let's see the video. Roll it, Miss Haley. Hi Gidget Hi, it's Miss Haley here. Well, what a strange week we've had. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. As you all know, my job, I love it so much because I get to put smiles on everybody's face. And there is a very famous quote that says, if you manage to put a smile on someone's face today, you've done more good than you know. And my goodness, do we not need laughter and smiles at the moment? So I've got together with a few friends and we've come up with a ways that we think will make you smile. So over to them. What happens when it's raining cats and dogs? We have to be careful not to step in a poodle. Why can't a leopard hide? Because it's always spotted. Why do golfers wear two pairs of pants? I don't know. In case they get a hole in one. Knock, knock. Who's there? At. At you. Bless you. Oh. Knock, knock. Who's this? Japan. 
Japan who? Japan's are falling down. What do cats like to eat for breakfast? Hmm? Mice Krispies. What do you get on the cow to jump on the jumper leap? A milkshake. What is something that you can serve but not eat? Have a thing. A volleyball. I are chicken so funny. Why did the cow cross the road? Because it wanted to get to the movies. What do you call a bear without any teeth? A gummy bear. Knock knock. Who's there? Robin. Robin who? I'm Robin the bank. <laughs> Why do you never give Elsa a balloon? Because she'll let it go, let it go. Why do ducks make good detectives? They always quack the case. What do doctors use for birds when they go to the hospital? Treatment. Knock knock. Who's there? Ice cream. Ice cream who? Ice cream so you can hear me! <laughs> what wobbles and flies in the sky? I don't know. What wobbles and flies in the sky? A helicopter! <laughs> Why was the joke about paper so bad? Because the punchline was terrible. I was speaking to Mr. Rothwell about homework recently, and he said he's always conf confused with the Victory Heights students because they never eat their homework. But when he was at school, he always used to eat his homework. And I was so confused. I was thinking, why is Mr. Rothwell used to eat his homework? So I reached out to one of Mr. Rothwell's old teachers and I said, why did young Ben used to eat his homework? And they said, because they once told him that the homework was a piece of cake. Mr. Rob, you are in so much trouble when I see you next. I'm gonna bring back Miss Sasha. Oh, what do we think about those jokes? Some good ones there, but what about this one? This was my favorite joke as well. There were some really good ones that I was really chortling. Right, here we go, Mr. Rothwell. What oh. do you call a chicken? What do you call a chicken staring at a lettuce? I don't know. What do you call a chicken staring at a lettuce? Chicken Caesar salad. Chicken nice. Caesar. I like it. Chicken Caesar salad. I, I, get, I get it. Chicken Caesar chicken salad. Caesar, yeah. 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 It's good. We just talked for a minute about the fact that Miss Hattie seems to have a lion. As a, a pet, did you see yeah. the size of her cat? It was massive, and I think Miss Don was from uh, what being was recorded. She? From Japan. Where, where was she? She looked so zen with that outfit. I no, I think she that. was in Japan this week. Clearly, that's why she's not been yeah. uh, in school. Uh, but yeah, happening. thank you, teachers and children, for your involvement in making that video. That was wonderful. Now, I think we have Miss Danielle on the line, although Miss Danielle isn't currently. Visible to me. Oh, here she is, Miss Danielle. Oh, hello, Miss Danielle. Are you there? Good morning. Yes, I'm here. I was just chuckling away all those funny jokes. Oh, it's true. It's true. It's true. Right now, you know, and I know that we love a uh, we love a wee poem, don't we? What What have you got to share with us, Miss Danielle? So our poetry recital was postponed, but all of our students are such keen beans that they submitted all of their um, poems by video. And Mr. Rothwell has an amazing compilation of some of the entries. We got so many that we'll have to share some at a later date as well, um, just because everyone was so enthusiastic. So here are some amazing entries from our pupils all the way from year one to year six. Well done. Miss Danielle, we're just getting it up. It's just going to be 30 more seconds. So uh, just bear oh. with me. You got yeah. anything to tell us about English this, this term, Miss Danielle, while I get it working? Boys and girls, this term for English, we're going to be focusing on our wonderful writing skills. We did a survey with all of our pupils and got some amazing ideas for your teachers. So we're going to be spending some time doing some writing about the things that you've said that you love and getting some ideas from that as well. So. We can also practice our articulate in April that Miss Sasha has put out. Try and articulate your thoughts and feelings as well. Yeah, I wonder what we should do for May with our Oracy Focus. If you've got any ideas, guys, you know you can always email me at principal, 
principal at vhprimary.com or contact me on CESA if you have got any ideas, especially from today's assembly. So, yeah, we usually use alliteration for our RSC focus. So what should we call it for May? We won't want mumblings in May. It's usually a word, Miss Danielle, that I, I associate with talking. So mediating in May, mentioning in May. What do you think, guys? Email me or, or let Miss Danielle know and let's get your ownership on some of that. But yeah, um, anything you want from today's video, do let us know. Um, and yeah, here's over to the poetry recital. Good morning, Victory Heights. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. And today I'm going to be reciting the poem River by Valerie Bloom. The river is a wanderer, a nomad, a tramp. He never chooses one place to set up his camp. The river is a winder through a valley and hill. He twists and he turns, he just cannot be still. The river is a holder as he buries down deep. Those little treasures that he wants to keep. The river is a baby as he gurgles and hums, and sounds like he's happily sucking his thumbs. The river is a singer as he dances along. The countryside echoes the notes of his song. The river is a monster, hungry and vexed. He goggled up trees and he'll swallow you next. Thank you everyone, goodbye. Cats, cats sleep anywhere, any table, any chair. Top of piano, window ledge, in the middle, on the edge. Open drawer, empty shoe, anybody's lap will do. Fitted in a cardboard box, in your cupboard, with your frocks. Anywhere. They don't care. Cats sleep anywhere. Bye bye. Hi everybody. Tiger by William Blight. Tiger, tiger, burning bright. In the force of the night. What mortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burn the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? In what hand dare seize the fire? <coughs> and what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart begin to beat, what dread hand or what dread feet? And what hammer, what the hammer, what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread, <coughs> what dread grasp? There it's deadly. Terror's clasp. When the stars drew down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamp make thee? Tiger, tiger burning bright in the force of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy Fearful symmetry. Thank you. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distance, deep or skies, burned the fire? of thine eyes on what wings there he is fire what the hand there sees the fire and what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart and when thy heart began to beat what dread hand what dread feet what the hammer what the chain in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp? There its deadly terrorist clasp. When the stars threw down the spears and water heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamp 
make D. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful semi try? I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana. When the temperature rise above 85, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So we make it to the beach. So iguana and me, then he sits on my shoulder and we stroll by the beach. See, I'm walk. I'm, I'm, and I'm walking with my iguana. With, I'm walking with my iguana. Well, if anyone sees us, we're big surprise. My iguana and me are on a daily exercise till somebody c calls the local police says says I've got an alligator tied to a leash when I'm walking with my iguana I'm walking with my iguana. It's the spines on his back that makes him look grim, but he just loves to be tickled under his chin. And I know my iguana is ready for bed. When I, when he when he puts his pajamas and lays down his sleepy head and I'm walking with my iguana, still walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana and my piracha and my chila, chihuahua and my chihuahua with my gorilla. My, my caterpillar and I'm walking with my iguana and with my iguana with my iguana it was brilliant and the slithery toves did gyre and gimble in the log all men to were in the board gross and the mole rats hungry beware the jabberwock my son the jaws that bite the claws that catch but where the jub jub bird and shun the free Miss Bench snatch. He took his boy pal sword in hand. Long time the magnavious foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in offish thought he stood, came the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffing through the tulgay woods and burped. As it came, one, two, one, two, through and through, the four pal blade went snip a snap. He left it dead, and he left it dead, and with its head he went glamping back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frackest day, Kaloo, Kalay! He chortled in, in his joy. Twas brilliant. And the slithery toves did a guy and gimble in the wall. All mimsy were the boar groves, and the mom rats out gave. The Morning Rush by John Foster. Into the bathroom, turn on the tap, wash away the sleepiness, splish, splash, splash. Into the bedroom, pull on your vest. Quickly, quickly, get yourself dressed. Down to the kitchen, no time to lose. Bubble up your breakfast, 
put on your shoes. Back to the bathroom, squeeze out the paste. First, brush, brush your teeth. No time to waste. Look in the mirror, comb your hair. Hurry, scurry, hurry, scurry, down to the stairs. Pick up your school bag up off the floor, grab your coat, and out through the door. I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. When the temperature rises above 85, my iguana's looking like he's coming alive. So we make it to the beach, my iguana and me. Then he sits on my shoulder while we show by the sea. I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. Well, if anyone sees us, we are a big surprise, my iguana and me, on our daily exercise. Till so somebody phones, the local police says I'm gonna alligator tie to the leash. When I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. It's his spines on his back that make him look grim, but he just loves to be tickled under his chin. And now I know that my iguana is ready for bed when he puts on his pajamas and lays down my, his sleepy head. I'm walking with my iguana, still walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana, and my piranha, and my chihuahua, and my chinchilla with my gorilla, my cat's pillar, I'm walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. When the temperature rises to above 85, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So we make it to the beach, my iguana and me. Then he sits on my shoulder as we stroll by the sea. I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. Well, if anyone sees us, we're a big surprise. My iguana and me on our daily exercise. Tins till someone phones the local police, says I've got an alligator tied to a leash. I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana. It's the spines on his back that makes him look grim, but he just loves to be tickled under his chin. And I know when my iguana is ready for bed, when he puts on his pajamas and lays down his sleepy head. I'm walking with my iguana, still walking with my iguana, with my piranha, with my chihuahua, with my chinchilla, and my gorilla, my caterpillar. And I'm walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana. When the battle cries spoken and the voice of war is heard, the soldiers of the allies to battlefields do move. The enemies are sun as if waiting for the sun, they hear this awesome sound, the booming of the gun. They struggle in the trenches with gaunting fear, without knowing that 161 is here. The shells come whistling all around, and wreck and break and knock things down, creating havoc among the lines and with it all surrounds. The enemy has broken its torn's entire dismay. Those so inclined, get down on your knees and pray. The Allies are victorious, the enemy is on the run. Once again, they have been beaten by the glories of the gun. I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. When the temperature rises to above 85, my iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So we make it to the beach, my iguana and me. Then he sits on my shoulder as we stroll by the sea. I'm walking with my iguana, with my iguana, and I'm walking with my iguana. Well, if anyone sees us, we're a big surprise. My iguana are, and me on a daily exercise. Till somebody phones the local police, says I've got an alligator tied to a leash. When I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with a, my iguana. It's the spines on his back that make him look grim but he just loves to be tickled under his chin and i know my iguana is ready for bed when he puts on his pajamas pajamas and lays down his sleepy head and i'm walking with my iguana still walking with my iguana with my iguana with my iguana and with my parara and with my chihuahua and with my Chinchilla with my gorilla, my caterpillar, and I'm walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana. Cats by Eleanor Farjan. Cats sleep anywhere. 
any table, any chair. Top of piano, window ledge, in the middle, on the edge. Open drawer, empty shoe, anybody's lap will do. Fitted in a cardboard box, in the cupboard with your rocks. Anywhere, they don't care. Cats sleep anywhere. I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana when the temperature rises to above 85. My iguana is looking like he's coming alive. So we make it to the beach, my iguana and me. Then he sits on my shoulder as we stroll by the sea. And I'm walking with my iguana. I'm walking with my iguana. Well, if anyone sees us, we are a big surprise. My iguana and me on our daily exercise. Till somebody phones the local police. Says I've got an alligator tied to a leash. When I'm walking with my iguana, I'm walking with my iguana. It's the spines on his back that make him look grim. But he just loves to be tickled under his chin. And I know that my iguana is ready for bed when he puts his pajamas and lays down his slippy head. And I'm walking with my iguana, still walking with my iguana. With my iguana, with my iguana, with my piranha, with my chihuahua, with my chinchilla, with my gorilla, with my caterpillar. And I'm walking with my iguana, with my iguana, with my iguana.